Hey guys, welcome to your first lesson in calculus. My name is Amit and I'm going to be your instructor this semester. So um, I wanted to remind you guys that um, when you watch this these video lessons, you're not expected to understand everything. And in fact, it's okay if you understand nothing. The objective of this is for you to have all the notes copied down because you know often when you're copying something down, you're so focused on the actual um, process of copying something down, especially if you're doing it quickly, that you don't really think about what you're copying down and you don't even have time to process what you're copying down. So by having done this, I wanna give you guys a chance to have your notes copied down uh, at, your, at your own pace and come to class prepared with questions, um, things that you don't understand. So in class, I am going to go over each of these slides and give you guys a chance to ask questions. Okay, so as you're taking these notes, write down some questions you may have, and you can ask them during class. So uh, in section 2.1, we're going to have a preview of calculus. So first of all, let's talk about a secant line. So a secant line is basically a line um, that passes through two points of a curve. So like this blue line right here, it passes through these two points of this curve. Therefore, it is called a secant line. And if you remember from algebra, the slope of any line is given by y2, which is same as f of x2, minus y1, which is same as f of x1. So we can also write this as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Divided by, so you have f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1. And just a, a quick refresher, when we see f of like x2, this means the value of the function x at the point x2. So the value of the function is always the y value. So it doesn't matter like which point we label as the first point and the second point, but this point here, negative one, negative one, I'll call that as our first point. And then the second point, two, one, I'll call that as our second point. And when I find the slope of these, it's going to be f of x2, in other words, y2, minus f of x1, in other words, y1, divided by x2, which is 2, over x1, which is negative 1. So we have 1 minus negative 1. Remember, the two negatives back-to-back -back make a positive, so that, that gives you a 2. We got x2 minus x1, 2 minus negative 1. These two back negatives back-to-back -back make a positive, and we end up with 3. So in the graph above, uh, the slope of the secant line to the points negative 1, that's the x value, now, f of x1 is a corresponding y value, which is also negative 1. And 2 comma f2, so the x value is 2, and the corresponding y value is 1. So f of 2 is going to be 1, and we have 2 thirds. Okay, now next example um, is called the instantaneous rate of change. Now, here's where calculus differs from algebra. All right, so just kind of a like a side note. Let's say that we're going from here to San Francisco and um, it takes us six hours to get there. So what we can do is using algebra, we can find the average speed um, from here to San Francisco. So let's say it takes us six hours to get there and I think it's like 300 miles. So we can say that we went an average of 50 miles per hour. We take the distance divided by the time it took us. But that's the average speed. It's not like we were going 50 miles the whole time. At some points, we may have going, been going 80 miles. At some points, we may have been going 40 miles. So where calculus comes in handy is that calculus helps us find the instantaneous rate of change, which means the rate of change at any given point in time, which if you think about it is super helpful. So if you're going from here to San Francisco and you want to know, um, how fast were we going at two hours and 30 minutes into our trip? Calculus can, t can tell us that, whereas algebra can't. Algebra only tells us the average speed of the whole trip, but calculus can tell us the exact speed, which is called the instantaneous rate of change at any given point. So the instantaneous rate of change at the point x equals a is the rate of change of the function at point x equals a. This is the slope of the tangent line to the curve. Now, a tangent line is different from a secant line. So notice that a secant line, it's a line that's going to pass through two points of a curve, so it intersects the curve. 
in, at two different points. But a tangent line is a little bit different. Okay, so a tangent line, which is shown here, so we're looking at uh, the point x equals 1. Okay, because it says estimate the instantaneous rate of change at x equals 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take the point x equals 1 on the curve and we're going to draw a line that's going to touch the, this curve only at that point. No other, so it's not going to intersect the curve anywhere else except for that point. And that is a definition of a tangent line. So a tangent line, it's going to hit that curve specifically just at that point and nowhere else. Okay, and we want to estimate the the slope of this of this line. Now, in the previous problem, it was easy because we had two different points on the curve, and we can just say y two minus y one over x two minus x one. Over here, we only have one point on the curve, which is a point. This is one, and this is three. So all we have is this point right there, which is a point one three. But for slope, we need two points. So here's where we're going to be doing a little bit of estimation. And when you do this for homework, you are going to be estimating, so you'll have a little bit of a leeway. So let's find another point, and if we can find a point um, with integer coordinates, that'll be the best. So integer co so like this point here, it's kind of an approximation, so I don't want to use that. So I want to use something like this point, which has integer coordinates. Like this point is a point two seven. Okay, so my two points are going to be 1, 3, and 2, 7, and then from there I find the slope, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and that gives me 4. So let's say this curve represents the, the speed uh, of a, let's say a bicycle, because cars don't go this slow, but let's say it's the speed of a bicycle. So what we can say is that at after one hour, the bicycle was traveling at 4 miles per hour. Okay, now if you have any questions, please think of them and I'd be happy to answer them during class. Okay, now uh, we're going to estimate the instantaneous rate of change of the function 4t squared plus 3 at the point t equals to negative 2. So once again, when we see the instantaneous rate of change, what we're talking about is we have a curve 4t squared plus 3. So what I'm going to do is on the side, I'm just going to sketch that curve. And I'm not going to do like an exact sketch, I'm going to do an approximate sketch. This is going to be the sketch 4t squared plus 3 at the point t comma uh, t equals to negative 2. So t equals to negative 2 is going to be somewhere here. And I want to find the slope of this, the tangent line, which is the instantaneous rate of change. So that's going to be here, like this. Now if you're given a graph, we could use an approximation like we did in the previous one. But in this case, we're going to be using the function g of t equals to 4t squared plus 3 at the point t equals to negative 2. So here's what we're going to do. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to be choosing x values that are getting closer and closer to negative 2. And we're going to compute the slope of the secant lines at each value. Okay, so let, let me show you what the setup looks like. So these are my intervals. So when, when I say the word interval, this refers to x values. Oops, sorry. This refers to x values. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off at our x1 is always going to be negative 2. But then for x2, we're going to start off a little bit further away from negative 2. So I started off at like negative 1.5. And then we're going to get closer and closer. So we're going to go to negative 1.5, negative 1.9, negative 1.99, negative 1.999, etc., etc. So my x1 is always going to be negative 2 because I want the instantaneous rate of change at negative 2. And then for my x2 value, I'm going to start off here at negative 1.5. Then I'm going to get closer and closer and closer to x1. So I'm going to get closer and closer and closer to negative 2. So uh, you can do this by hand if you want to, but I strongly recommend using technology. So um, the one, you know, you can use a like a scientific calculator, but uh, Desmos.com is going to be a really powerful tool for this class. So uh, I'm going to show you guys how to do this in Desmos. Okay, so this is like a like a like a picture of it, but uh, I'm going to actually go to Desmos and show you guys how to put this in. So go to Desmos.com, then cl click on graphing calculator if you've never used this, 
And first, I'm going to input my function. So my function is uh, g of t equals to 4t squared plus 3. So I'm going to put g of t equals to 4t squared um, plus 3. Okay, now once I have my function, I'm going to uh, I'm going to put in my um, my formula, which is g of x2 minus g of x1 or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And the way I do that is I'm going to put, so let's say I'm looking at my first point, my x2 is negative 1.5 and my x1 is negative 2. So I want to find the value of the function at negative 1.5. So what I could do is I could take negative 1.5 and plug it in so I could figure out what is g of negative 1.5. Okay, so that gives me the y value of this and then I can say what is g of negative 2 it gives me the y value at negative 2 um, and then I can say y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 but that takes a lot of time right so let's just have um, Desmos do this for us so in Desmos we're going to take our two x1 and x2 values and just put g of x2 minus g of x1 over x2 minus x1 but for these values so the first one here's what it would look like it would be uh, g of x2, which is g of negative 1.5, minus g of x1, which is g of negative 2. Highlight the whole thing, and then press uh, the forward slash, which makes division, over uh, divided by x2, which is negative 1.5, minus x1, which is negative 2, and we get negative 14. And then we, we would repeat the same process for the rest of the points. So you would do the same thing for uh, negative 2 and negative 1.9 so now our x2 becomes negative 1.9 our x1 becomes negative 2 but we're still doing g of x2 minus g of x1 that's your y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so on and so forth so we can see that as we get closer and closer to negative 2 our slope gets closer and closer to negative 16 okay so what that tells us is that the instantaneous rate of change at the point negative 2 is going to be negative 16. Okay, once again, if you think of any, any questions, um, please please let me know. Um, I'm gonna go over just one quick thing for you guys. Like, let's say we wanted to find the instantaneous rate of change at the point t equals to negative four. Then what I would do is, I would say my, my x1 is negative four, that'll be fixed. And then I would start off at like negative 4.5. And then I would get closer and closer to negative 4. So then it'll be, uh, you know, like negative 4.4, negative 4.3, etc., etc. So we would get closer and closer to it. Okay, and that is the end of our first lesson.